Hi guys, welcome back to Byte Review. I actually think Samsung DeX is doing some pretty magic stuff with the Note 10 and very often I don't really see it get a huge amount of coverage despite being one of the only phones that really offers that sort of service. And I could just sit here and tell you what DeX is all about and what it's like, but I don't think that's really good enough. So what I'm going to do is use Samsung DeX as my main computer for seven days straight without using anything else. So that's no MacBook, no computer, no iPad, nothing. I'm just going to use DeX. And to make things more interesting, I'm going to shoot this entire video on the Galaxy Note 10 and I'm going to edit it in Samsung DeX using something like Adobe Premiere Rush. No computers, no cheating, no nothing. This is a complete tryout of Samsung DeX. So my DeX setup is pretty much as follows. I've got a Kingston Nucleum USB-C hub as the main basis of it all. I've got power going in at the top left through USB-C, which is nice. I've got an HDMI going in on the left too. In front of that, I've got the mouse adapter so I can use my Logitech MX Master. And the OnePlus 7 Pro here is just to show you where the Note 10 would go because I'm using that to film this with. And to tail it all off, I'm using the Logitech Keys to Go Bluetooth keyboard, which is going to be my basic keyboard for this as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this for a day and then I will check back in with you to let you know how things are progressing. So I will see you all then. So day one is over and I want to give you my thoughts. Initially, this really does seem like a Chromebook. If you've ever used a Chromebook before and you load up DeX, you'll be instantly familiar, just the way it works and how the dock works and how the apps seem to relate and work together and even the file system really does feel just like a Chromebook. And because of that, things on the G Suite work really well. In my day-to-day -day job as a teacher, I use G Suite for everything. So Google Slides, Google Docs, Google Classroom, and they all work pretty flawlessly on the Note 10 with Samsung DeX. So in that capacity, it's actually been really great and I haven't really had any huge problems. The Bluetooth keyboard typing is a little weird to get used to because it's so small um, compared to what I'm really used to, but it's actually been pretty fine. and I've managed to plan and do everything I would normally do on this without any issues, which is nice. But as far as day one goes, things have been pretty great and um, I've been enjoying using it, I guess. It hasn't been so bad at all. Um, I genuinely think you could probably use this for a lot of stuff, especially if you only need it for things on the G Suite. Um, yeah, overall pretty good. I'll check in back with you tomorrow. So I've actually been out on a shoot all day today, so I haven't really made any use of Samsung DeX at all at this point. However, one of the first things I have to do is back up everything we shot from a memory card onto the portable SSD, so then it's all backed up. Uh, because I'm a little hesitant, I have actually already backed this up to Sam's laptop, so I'm not going to lose anything, but um, I'm going to test it out on Dex as well and just see how we get on. Okay, so it seems like you can transfer small things quite easily and it's not too much hassle, but transferring uh, lots of really big files, and we've got a few uh, over 100 gig of stuff, it's actually really, really difficult and it seems to take a really long time. I think that must just be a limitation of how DEX works or how it's working with my current setup. Doesn't seem to be a huge amount you can do about that. But it does transfer, it just takes a really long time and that's not what you get an SSD for. So that seems to be a little tricky, but smaller things, fine, pictures, whatever, but doing other stuff just seems a bit more hard. So maybe I'll give that a miss for next time or something to keep in mind anyway. So day three of Samsung DeX and today mainly I've been using it to do some simple web design which brings us to today's sponsor Hostinger. Hostinger is an all-in-one website hosting service for some of the most affordable prices out there right now and if you use the link hostinger.com slash byte and the coupon code byte you can get up to 91% off your yearly web hosting plans. I've actually been debating running a website alongside Byte Review for quite a long time now but I don't get all the time in the world to make videos. So I think a lot of those ideas might just come out better as a website post or page. And while I don't really wanna get into the nitty gritty of how it's going to be, I think it's going to be an interesting website for you to visit when it is ready. But if you're like me and new to all things website based, you can also use Hostinger's website builder to piece together your website. 
There's a huge selection of templates to help you get started. And personally, this is the route I'm going down, not only building a website through here, but also hosting it and getting a business email too. With a reliable 99.9% .9 of uptime and all of these features packed into one, Hostinger is a fantastic place to check out if you're thinking of getting into web hosting. Be sure to visit hostinger.com slash byte and to use the coupon code byte to get up to 91% of your yearly web hosting plan. So another thing a lot of people expect from a PC or a laptop setup is to be able to do some form of gaming. So today I've been testing out a few games on Dex to see how they've been going. And I started with Fortnite, which I couldn't even get past the loading screen on, although maybe that's for the best. I also tried PUBG Mobile, which surprisingly worked okay. Um, the keyboard support seems to work and the mouse just acts as if you're swiping across the screen. And while it works, it's not ideal. You wouldn't really want to play it like this in any way possible. It seems any small movement of the mouse really translates to quite a big swipe on the screen. And while it is playable, I really wouldn't recommend it. It's not particularly fun to play that way. And the last game I tried was Minecraft. And I actually had quite high hopes for Minecraft because it does support keyboard and mouse on the phone. So you can connect to keyboard and mouse and use it kind of how you would do on a PC but that doesn't seem to translate massively well to Dex. It recognizes the keyboard still, but it still assumes that you're using like a mouse, almost like you are touching the screen still in a similar way to PUBG. And while it works, it's not really that good to play with. It's also pretty glitchy as well. It didn't start up a few times. And then when it did start up, it kind of flickered quite a lot. So it's really not a great way to play it, but it's still interesting that it can run. I'm going to keep trying a few other games to see what I can get out of Dex, but so far, as for gaming is concerned, it's not the best, but like I say, I'll keep looking and see what I can find. So day five of Dex, and one of the things that I have been enjoying over this entire period of time is being able to transfer photos directly from my camera into Dex itself, because you just use the same mobile app, you can transfer pictures and videos over Wi-Fi, which is really, really nice. And it just works nice and seamlessly. Also editing photos in VSCO or Visco on a desktop basis is actually really, really nice. It's one of those apps that you can only really use on touch and on a mobile device or on a tablet if you want a bigger experience. But if it's ever a case for them to make a desktop app, I would really love it if they did because I've actually really enjoyed using it on here and all the controls are just as powerful as they were before. Obviously, if you want a bigger photo editing experience, Lightroom Mobile is still here and that seems to work pretty well too. It's been a little bit glitchy in places where I can't seem to export certain photos, but if you go back to the main menu, you can export them with no problem at all. But all the controls and everything works really nicely in there and in fairness, the Samsung is doing really well at that sort of thing. I can browse the internet and edit photos and have music on in the background and it's really not skipping a beat. And I think that's probably thanks to the 12 gig of RAM and beefed out processor in there, but it seems to be doing a really good job. I haven't had any indication that it seems to be slipping up at all. So moving on to day six, today I am going to spend all of my day pretty much in Premiere Rush on Dex trying to get this edit together. Now I have been doing bits and pieces before, like I said, but I think the biggest challenge of this whole video is going to be able to keep the quality where I want it to be while using Rush. There's uh, quite a lot of features and stuff that just aren't there on uh, Rush that are there on Premiere Pro, which is what you use normally. So it's gonna be tricky to get it together. One of the things that is like ultimately frustrating is when you're using keyboard controls on Rush, and I'm super happy that it's got keyboard controls, is that P is play, not spacebar. P, why would it be P? Every other video editor, it's always spacebar. So on there it's P and it's just like, I keep forgetting and I keep hitting spacebar and it keeps doing nothing and I keep getting annoyed. Um, but I am glad it's got sh keyboard shortcuts in there. I found out today that plus and minus, I should have known this anyway, can zoom in and out of the timeline, which makes it a little bit easier. Although it does jump massive gaps, you can't be massively accurate with it, uh, which is great, but still not ideal. One of the things I think is, because Premiere Rush is on like mobile and on laptops and on desktops and everything as well, 
it very much stays in the mobile mode when it's on decks. It doesn't change to laptop mode. And you know, that'd be great if it, if it could, but I understand why it doesn't, um, because it is on a phone technically. And I think if it could switch that laptop mode, suddenly using these would be fantastic. Um, but at the moment, it's kind of like, it feels like a weird hybrid of touch and not touch. And it's kind of all over the place. The overall, it's tricky to use, but I will keep plugging. <laughs> And you'll see what this video looks like anyway. So if you haven't noticed anything at this point, then it's done its job really well. But like I say, I don't want to bash it too much because I think it is a fantastic video editor. And if you're new to video editing, wow, what a way to get into it. It's super simple, super breezy and light to use. And the Note 10 is absolutely plowing through it. I've had very little slow ups and things like that. The only things I have suffered from are crashes, which seems to be happening relatively often and um, I must admit at one point I was quite tempted to switch back to Premiere just just on a time basis. I'm spending way too long trying to figure stuff out when I just know how to do it exactly on Premiere. So I was this close to switching back but I want to stay with the video, I want to stick on editing on decks through mobile so I will carry on plugging and I will tune in with you tomorrow and let you know how this whole experience has gone. So I will see you then. It's day seven, so I think it's time to wrap up this whole experience on Samsung decks that we've been having for a week. And the simplest question that you can ask is, can Samsung decks really replace a desktop kind of setup? And the simple answer to that is yes, if your usage is in line with what a Chromebook can do. And what I mean by that is if you just reply to emails and use the Google Suite or use Google Chrome, or use the Microsoft Office suite, for instance, you can actually get away with using Samsung DeX for pretty much everything and your experience will be pretty darn good. But if you are after more than that, like more gaming or more entertainment purposes or more things like video and photo editing, Samsung DeX is still lacking in certain areas. In some ways, it has completely blown me away though, being able to edit high-res photos and actually being able to edit 4K footage on my mobile device has been pretty shocking. The fact that it can cut through 4K better than my PC can sometimes, that's unbelievable. And the fact that we can do all that with the device in our pocket is nothing short of amazing. In other ways though, DeX still feels like a piece of beta software for Samsung. And of course it all relates to how good the apps are because that's where the real experience is coming from. And while some apps are really, really very decent and Samsung can like pull the wool over your eyes and really make you feel like you're working on a desktop in some situations, there's other times when it starts to feel wobbly and falls apart. When apps don't have the same features or windows won't resize or they just act and react in different ways, the whole thing feels pretty uncohesive and things can start to fall apart quite quickly. Obviously, I'm going to be super happy to return to my PC and MacBook. I've already got the PC set back up and it will be nice to go back to those things. But it's really nice that Samsung are pushing this idea that your one device can be the device that does everything. And I think in the future, you know, however many years from now, we probably all will just have one device that does the whole lot. And this is a nice glimpse into what that could look like. There's so much innovation in the mobile industry in the moment through loads of different channels. I am quite happy that Samsung are still pushing DeX as one of those features. And there's not many other people doing it out there. And I'm happy a manufacturer as big as Samsung are still happy to push something along these lines. Because I think it's one of the more interesting things going on at the moment. And the fact that they throw it into a phone and they know a lot of people probably won't use it. I think that's really cool. Anyway, that rounds up this video and those are all of my thoughts on it. Um, I'd love to know what you think of this experiment. Please let me know in the comments below if you think it's been worth it or not. If you liked the video, pop a like. If you loved it, pop a sub. And if you really enjoyed it, why not hit the bell as well? That'd be fantastic. I will see you all in the next one where I can start to edit videos again in relative comfort of Premiere Pro.